welcome to our interview today. My name is Ray Piper and I'm the co-artistic director of Chantry Dance. And I'm Paul Chantry and I'm also co-artist director of Chantry Dance. So today we have another amazing artist to interview. We are so lucky to be able to talk to this wonderful human being. And Paul, because he has worked with this particular person, is going to introduce him to you. So we're amazingly delighted to be speaking to the incredible Will Tuckett today. Now, for those of you who don't know Will, <laughs> as if you don't know Will, Will trained at the Royal Ballet School and graduated into Sanders Wells Royal Ballet, now Birmingham Royal Ballet, in 1988. Two years later, he moved to the Royal Ballet, where he was promoted to soloist in 1998 and a principal character artist in 2002. He has created works for many companies, including the Royal Ballet, English National Ballet, Birmingham Royal Ballet, Ron Bear, National Ballet of China, National Ballet of Canada, <laughs> Ballet Black, and Sarasota Ballet. Oh my God. <laughs> Get on a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Will has directed operas for Opera North, Ilford Arts, and Garsington Opera Festival, and has choreographed for Opera North, the Royal Opera, and Grange Park Opera. Will has made his name for himself as a master of narrative dance theatre for all the family and has choreographed and created his own version of Pinocchio, The Feed the Baghdad, Fairies, and has won an Olivier for his production of Wind in the Willows. He has also directed the live stage versions, and this is very exciting, of CBB's In the Night Garden and Bing. Woo! And in the last year, Will has only directed one dance show while the rest of his work has been in theatre. Well, Are what you right? Have you recovered from that? <laughs> <laughs> I think what it is, it's such an amazing variety, it's such a colour, and that's what I always think of you, Will, when I, when I hear your name, is this guy can do everything. Well, I don't know, I think people get bored of me doing one thing, so they try and get rid of me, and then I go into another one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try with this, you might be okay at this. Anyway, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's very nice to be talking to you both. Yeah. You I'm sorry I'm a bit squinty. I'm having to be in my garden, because my wife is working, in, her office is in the living room, and so I've been chucked into the garden. Wow. They're rather beautiful garden, though. Yeah, so I'm, not, I'm, garden, so I'm not complaining. I just that's why I look a bit squinty. It's a lovely backdrop that you have. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Zoom backdrop. It's not really. <laughs> I'm in my loo. Yeah. How are you coping amongst all of this craziness that's going on? Um, well, it's been a bit. I've, we've been very lucky in that actually, as a, a, the illness hasn't really touched our family, mm -hmm. which have been we've been very lucky about. But it has had quite a few of my friend, my close friends and, and that's been has brought it home a lot just a how lucky we are and um and just what an awful situation everybody is in i mean it's um personally in terms of work with theaters being closed it's a bit tricksy mm -hmm. as in there isn't any <laughs> but um <laughs> and my wife runs a museum and so obviously as well her museum is closed so we're in that uh situation of trying to sort of second guess what's going on for the next few months but then that's like the whole country so other than that quite jolly really cool and, and, here. and, and, your, home, and your homeschooling what kind of home my, are you <laughs> well, uh, my my son is homeschooled and so we've been doing quite a quite a bit of that so i've been working on my fractions <laughs> <laughs> currently the joys of key stage two right there yeah. I know, you don't want to be doing fractions. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us both and to all of our wonderful listeners. Um, so our first question for you, let's go right back to the beginning. How and when did you get into dancing? I, well, I got into dance when I was really small. Um, I, my, my parents, my parents got divorced when I was quite little, but when they were still together, I grew up in Sutton Coalfield and uh, my sister went to, my, I had an older brother and my sister, who's a very close age to me, she's just about over a year, she went to ballet and my mum and I said, if she put me in as well, she'd get about an hour and a half off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she put me in as well. And so that was sort of how it started. And then I carried on and uh, my, my parents put up and was, uh, my mum, Bristol and I became an RAD scholar there and did that while I was at primary school and then at the end of primary school I auditioned for White Lodge and I got into White Lodge but I was a bit rubbish and I was also too tall so I got thrown out of White Lodge after two years and I went to a, a school that doesn't exist anymore it was called Bush Davis and that was an all-girls school and there were three boys and there were about 500 girls so after a year of being there, I then left and I went home to, um, to Bristol 
And if if I'd not gone to ballet school, I was I got um, a scholarship to the cathedral school there, which was uh, as a, a music scholar. And so they said, do you want to come back and sort of do a version of that music scholarship for the last couple of years? So I went to the cathedral school and did some O levels. I was quite lazy, but in the evenings I um I did ballet classes, and I I always it always annoyed me that I got thrown out of my lodge. So I, I re-auditioned and I went back to the upper school and I was there for three years um, and then I joined Sadler's Wells. So I, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was that funny thing where I think I started working when I was 17, I suppose. Yeah, 17, just 18, around that. And then I was at Sadler's Wells and then when they left and went to Birmingham to become Birmingham Royal Ballet, I transferred to the Opera House and joined the Royal Ballet there. Yeah. Then I was there for ever such a long time and then because <laughs> i'm really old and i was there for a while and then um i was doing less and less work there because i was more and more i was away choreographing mm -hmm. and directing stuff so that and in the end um monica mason was director when i left and she was lovely and she said she was like well you're like you're never here mate <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you should think about leaving so monica um uh I, she's, I, I became a freelancer for the, for the um, ballet company and so I do guesting with them, uh, which was lovely actually and it meant I didn't have to do any of the boring stuff, which was great. Mm -hmm. So I did the things that I liked and Monica was always like, she said it's so clear that you're bored doing some of these roles, maybe you don't do them anymore. <laughs> so I did not I did the things that I could still concentrate on and that, that was nice and I also then went all over the shop making work mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I got older and fatter, and so now I don't do any guesting, so I can't get in anything. And uh, I just make work, and so now I, I direct almost more than I choreograph now. Mm. Depends on the year. I do smarts consultancy for different people, um, looking at large organisations and the way that people plan and structure things. Uh, yeah, so that, I guess I grew up. I'm not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say, are you originally from Bristol? Were you born in Bristol? Uh, no, I was born in, born in Sutton Coalfield. And then I went to Bristol when I was six, seven, around then. Oh, right, okay. Because, I no, I'm Bristolian, born and bred. Are you? I was like, ooh, yes. Whereabouts, whereabouts are you from? Well, I was born in a, a little village called Westbury on Trim. I know, uh, Westbury on Trim, yeah. And then I ended up uh, living in a place called Henbury, which is just kind of yep. Westbury on Trim. But I sort of... You know, I went to school um, in the Clifton area for a while. Whereabouts? Because because I grew up on Pembroke Road in Clifton. Oh, yeah. Pembroke Road. Oh my gosh! <laughs> because well, my mum used to work at the Bristol Vic Theatre School. She was head of dance there, which right. is obviously okay. like basically on Pembroke Road, the top of Pembroke Road. Road. Yeah. So you know the really ugly big cathedral, the really horrible modern one. Yeah. We were like about five doors down from that. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! <laughs> there you go. So to all of the listeners, we essentially we were neighbours. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it's very, very posh now, all of that bit. I know. Was, we didn't have a bathroom when I was there <laughs> for about two years. We had bars in the kitchen sink, so it really wasn't very posh at that point. But it is posh now. Yeah, it's, it's very posh now. Yeah. Um, yeah, good old. So person. weirdly, as a kid, when Spring on Trim had a tiny, it called itself a kind of safari park. It wasn't, it was like a tiny little thing. Yeah. Do you remember that one? And so yeah. I used to go in and look after their birds of prey when I was a kid. <laughs> Who knew? Wow! I, I know. I used to have a thing about owls, and I used to go and look after their owls, and they had a kestrel that I used to love. Oh, because I, I actually learned to dance in the village hall at Westbury on Trips. So. There we go. You see? Amazing, <laughs> Bristol. We love. Oh, you. Yes, it's like nonsense. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> sorry about yeah. that diversion, everyone. Back in the room. <laughs> Back in the room. Um, so yeah, you, you know, obviously you told us uh, about your dance career and how you moved on then into choreography. What was it that drove you into choreography initially like why um i mean i did when I, was watching, and I was quite rubbish at it i wasn't really interested in it and i i think at that point i really really wanted to be a dancer and then when i got older when i went back as a teenager um i sort of wasn't very interested in dancing really i just i just didn't find it a very interesting thing to do but i quite liked um, structuring how other people did it and I thought that was quite interesting and there was a competition in the school which I did a piece for 
Darcy. Oh, no, actually, the f that was the second year. Maybe, I can't remember. First year that I was doing it, we did a stupid kind of very theatrical thing about being on the tube. And I remember very clearly we had we had a bet, which was if we won it, we'd split the money that you got and we'd all get to the pub. <laughs> and so everybody that was in it, we'd, everybody got an equal amount of cash for being in it, and then which was about enough for a half of sort of shandy. So um, and we won. <laughs> and it was partly it was also because I've I've never been very good at doing at obeying rules really, and a lot of people have been working very very hard for a long time to make things, and I couldn't be bothered and and uh, we made something sort of in the couple of days before the competition and then it won much to the chagrin of some of my compatriots but yeah we did that and then the second year I took it a bit more seriously and I made something for Billy Trevitt and he's one of the ballet boys now mm -hmm. so we're in the same year and Darcy Bustle because we were in the same year and so I did a duet for them and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blow my own, own trumpet because nobody else is going to do it otherwise at this point in time um, uh, this lovely thing that De Valois, Madame was was judging the competition and she, you know, De Valois saw it and really loved it and said it should go on in the school show. So that was my first thing on at the Opera House was with Darcy and Billy in, in the school show. And it was nice when Darcy did a show, when she was retiring, she did a kind of history of all the things that she'd done. She went through her career and she started it by doing a bit of, um, of on classicism, which was the piece we did. Aww. So that was really nice. It was kind of funny something that we'd done when we were like 15, 16. Um, and then the third year, I wasn't allowed to enter the competition, but by that point, I, it was really what I wanted to do. But I got into a lot of trouble because also I wanna, um, I didn't, we didn't really have any cash when I was growing up. And so uh, it was hard to get the money to be at school. And there was a uh, Cosmopolitan magazine used to have a thing called the Cosmopolitan Dance Award, which was a thousand pounds, which 450 years ago when I was, <laughs> 16 with a lot of money and I entered that with a little solo and won it and Val Bourne who runs Dance Umbrella was one of the judges and she said do you want to come do it in the umbrella and I said yeah but can I do some other things as well if I do that and she said yeah all right so we did and so then I did over the next few years did things in the dance umbrella but got in lots of trouble because I wasn't supposed to in fact Mel Parker was at school said I'd be expelled if I <laughs> <laughs> but we did it anyway <laughs> we would have been fine but we got a really good review in a couple of papers and uh she read it so that wasn't good um yeah so things like that i had a bit of a turbulent <laughs> relationship with authority when i was at school I was say, you really got yourself expelled twice basically <laughs> three <laughs> times <laughs> oh dear we're not going to go into that right now no. anyway um no uh, yes, I wouldn't recommend anybody be quite so naughty. Um, but I had a lovely, um, a very lovely mentor in um, Norman Morris, who had been he he was the director who turned Romba into a um, into a contemporary company, mm -hmm. becoming a classical company. When Madame Romba sort of handed the reins over to him, and then he was also for a short time the director of the Royal Ballet, and then he became my choreography teacher, and he was a fantastic mentor and sounding board. And he sort of looked after me really within all of those, with all that time. But oddly, there was, there was a point when I very, very nearly left. And every now and again, I sort of wonder whether I should have done. And I really wanted to make films was the thing that I really wanted to do. And um, yeah, nearly left to do that and to go to film school, but then I didn't. Well, we're, well, we're very glad you didn't because yeah. we now enjoy your production. Well, I've had a lovely time, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I fall under a bus tomorrow. I've not had a bad time. It's been fun. <laughs>